Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be closing out our paycheck budget from our paycheck on October 16th. It is currently October 30th, so this budget is from October 16th from when we got paid until October 29th. It is currently Friday and I'm a little bit behind because I'm supposed to have my new budgets already for November starting today since we did get paid today. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out with you guys. And I also wanted to talk a little bit about my expense trackers, how I track my expenses, both um, all of our bills, our variable budget. I wanted to show you guys my cashless expense trackers as well. It's pretty much where I track our variable spending just so I have a running balance of how much I have left in each budget category. So this does not include any sinking funds. I do have my sinking fund envelopes here, which I did use three of the budget categories as well. Let's go ahead and close this out. What I'm going to use is this tracker here because I went ahead and let me unclip that. So with the expense trackers here, I did cross out, or not cross out, I made a line here just so I know when I started another um, paycheck budget. So this page here until the end of the line here was from our paycheck number one and then from October 16th from when we got paid which is this current pay period um, that I'm closing out right now. So from here until this page right here as well as I also have a cash page. So these three pages here are expense trackers for my checking account and I also have a separate one for cash that we have on hand so that's it for the pretty much for the expense trackers and then as you guys know I like to highlight my budget categories I already have my variable spending both here and here um, updated and it matches up to my cash list expense trackers here and one other thing since I do have my expense trackers out already I wanted to make a note of this page here so pretty much how I use the budget by paycheck workbook expense trackers I use it as like a check log to check or to always make sure that I am balancing out so the ending balance here always balances out with my checking account and I also do the same thing with cash so as I track all of my cash spending whatever it says I have left here um, I always make sure that is exactly what we have on hand depending on if I used any cash with like um, that involves change or anything like that usually my husband will use cash and the amount that he tells me that he uses already doesn't include the change. So that's, um, so over here when he eats out at work, he just gives me the whole dollar amount and then he just keeps the change in the car. So that's pretty much what we do with the change. We just keep it whole dollar. So if I'm off by a couple cents or anything like that, I know it's because of maybe the change. So that's how I use the expense tracker and the budget by paycheck workbook because I always want to make sure I balance out and that nothing is missing. I wanted to also make a note that I don't know if you've ever ordered anything online before. It's happened to me a couple times and I should have known better this time around. From target.com as well as I forgot what other websites that I purchased from. Sometimes you'll get charged and it gets taken out of your account and then it'll disappear. So that I had that happen with, um, we ordered a Christmas tree from Home Depot online and I did track it, or I thought I did, but it fell off or I saw it on our checking account and it fell off. So I don't know, that's, I don't know if that's ever happened to you or if you, if you track your expenses, do you guys wait a little bit before you write it on here? So that did happen with Target. So I did make a note here for a couple things. Something that I purchased for Christmas and for clothes for the kiddos is going to be delayed. That will most likely be counted with the October 30th paycheck budget, which is part of my November budget. So I just made sure to make myself a note so that if when I'm going in and budgeting or updating my budget for these categories I know to include that amount in there as well and I also was late to pay I thought for some reason I paid our cell phone bill but I hadn't I still need to put that on auto pay I just haven't done it I thought I paid for it early but I didn't so I made myself a note as well to carry that 
amount over to the October 30th paycheck budget. So, which is paycheck number one for November. Sorry if it sounds confusing with how I budget and everything. So um, that's just how my brain works. So this is for the next budget for October 30th. And then here I wrote this yesterday, which was Thursday, October 29th. I just wrote down the amounts that we have in our accounts. We only really have three. Um, checking account and two savings account. That's pretty much it. Moving back along to closing out the budget. We do have some leftover money from the previous paycheck budget, which was paycheck number one for October. This is not going to be included as income because it was just something that was left over from our account. And then I did transfer over or pay back our checking account using our sinking funds, which is a total of $100. And then... I got my first paycheck, which is kind of exciting. I know it seems small, but I did get my first uh, payment or income from my Amazon affiliate link. It's $11.63, but to me, that's, that's a lot of money. Because I know a lot of these um, affiliate links and Google AdSense money that I'm going to be receiving, it's all going to add up in the future, and I know a little bit helps. Every little bit helps. Going back really quick to the sinking funds. So for this paycheck period, we used or I used our fun envelope, clothing envelope, as well as Christmas. But some of it we used our debit card and some of it we used cash. So some of the ones that ended up on our debit card or that I used our debit card for, we, um, I'm going to circle it here so that you guys can see. So for this one here, we do have a Christmas expense. So there goes one, that was $39.39. And then we also had another one here. So Christmas, that was $15. So what I pretty much did with that, I just rounded up. So 40 bucks plus 15 is $55. So what I did was I took out 60 bucks I just rounded it up. I know I'm off by five bucks. What I did was I took $60 from my Christmas sinking fund to pay back our checking account. And when I say checking account, I don't necessarily mean depositing it right away into our checking account. It just goes into our cash um, pretty much to us, like our regular budget. So I ended up adding it on here. So here at the bottom, I have from Christmas. $60 Christmas sinking fund. I also used the fund envelope and the clothing envelope to pay back our checking account as well because I did put some purchases on a debit card. So that's what these are here. So um, I needed to pay back $20 from our fund envelope and then 20 bucks from clothing as well. So that's kind of how I do it. I don't try to think too much about it and figure out the exact change or anything. I just round up or down or usually I round up, uh, make it a whole amount because I don't have a ton of different denominations in these cash envelopes. I just have a bunch of 20s and 50s. I think I used my fun envelope and I got some change. Yeah, so recently this week I went to Target and I used cash from here. Same thing for the clothes. I went to Target and I used some money from here and I did get some change, but that's pretty much it. Anyways, that is pretty much all I wanted to say about the sinking funds for now. I just thought I'd throw it in there since that has something to do with this paycheck budget. So I'm going to go ahead and just add up all of our bills. $735.37, which I know is under, but because our cell phone didn't get taken out of our account just yet because I had just paid for it since I accidentally paid for it late. We did have some unexpected expenses here. Not really big ones, but we do have an expense for urgent care and my husband's doctor as well for a follow-up. So those were unexpected. Okay, so moving on to the variable spending. We had leftover amount of $2,746.90 after subtracting our income from all of our bills. So here, what I'm going to do is just add up our spending from here, $240.67. So for food, we're over just $0.67, cents, which is a win to me. <laughs> um, transportation, we haven't gotten gas because my husband hasn't been 
to work in about i'm gonna say two weeks now okay so what i forgot to do was add in the amount that we spent for clothing when i went shopping at target as well as for fun so what I did was added that in our ex cash expense tracker, but I wanted it to balance out. This is what I did. So for clothing, I counted it as income because I put it into the budget, but then I spent that money anyway. So that kind of zeroes out. But then at the end of the month, it should work or it should balance out. Fingers crossed. We'll see at the end of this video um, or in my end of the month worksheets. So these just kind of balance out because what I'm going to then do is just write that as income. I'm going to go back over here and write that down as income. And I also did the same thing for our fun envelope, sinking fun envelope as well. Oh shoot, why did I color that? I just meant to I just meant to highlight the income part, not the clothing. So, what I did with this one is that I just erased the $20 here that I knew I owed our checking account. And I went ahead and just put down $23 because I know, I know I owe our checking account $20, but I also did spend $3 using this envelope. So I went ahead and just put $23 and then I put down that expense of $3 that I spent at Target. And I still came up with $202, which is what our balance was before. So hopefully that all worked out. And again, the reason why I want to write these all down and not just rely on tracking it here is because I want to be able to have all these numbers at the end of the month as far as um, tracking how much we spend every month, especially for clothing because we did spend a lot. Um, the $3 might not seem like a lot, but I know it'll all add up later on. So I went ahead and just did that. And I'm going to make a note of that here in my income. Again, I'm sorry if this all sounds confusing. I mean, it kind of makes sense or it does make sense to me. So here for sinking funds, I added a total of $123. So it'll be, I'm going to go ahead and just wipe this out. So 100 plus 123. Oh no, I wouldn't be doing the 20, just the $3. So I would be adding just an extra two, it'll be 203, right? Because I had already included that two, that $20 in there. So it'll be 203. We'll see what happens when I close it out. So let me just add this up again. 35, 85, 27. Just when I think I'm starting to get a hang of all this budget stuff, Throw in sinking funds and I'm just just way off <laughs> or just confusing the heck out of me. So clothing 116 and 40 cents. So um, I did put an asterisk here, just a mental note that these are all seasonal expenses. Whatever is highlighted is pretty much what we use every single month. So let me go ahead and just add these up. Okay, so now I carried over the leftover amount from the variable spending, we did spend a total of $633.88. I had originally budgeted $595, but I did throw in the Christmas and clothing in there that I wasn't expecting to spend on. But since we had the sinking funds, I'm allowed to spend it. <laughs> so, um, so here for the sinking funds, I believe we had a total of $600 go in here. And I did put these amounts into my sinking funds. Um, which are these envelopes here. So here we did put in $600 into our sinking fund, which gives us now a balance of $1,616.02. So for this budget period, we didn't put anything in our emergency fund. We did do it in the previous budget. So we should have a leftover amount of $1,616.02, which just eyeballing it right now, I know that that's off. And I did go ahead and looked at my expense trackers again. So these are the updated numbers that I have because I did forget to add up some expenses, mostly from the fun and events category. I forgot to add those expenses in there because um, it wasn't in my cashless expense trackers so that i forgot to put in so this number is not correct so what i should have 1000 so what i should have 
let me get it out. Let me get a little neater with, you know, given all these cross outs that I have going on throughout my budget planner. So it should be $1,597.05. So as of right now, or not right now because it's payday, so we have more money in there in our account. As of last night, when I was balancing everything out, we should have $1,387.03, which I have here on a post-it note as well as here. And then we also have $202 um, on hand as well, $202. So $1,387.03 plus $202, so that is $15 or $1,000. Five eighty nine and three cents it is off by eight dollars. So this is our actual amount. So eight dollars. Maybe it'll pop back up. I did try to recalculate the numbers, and this one was just fine. So as of right now, we do have a variance of eight dollars. So we are short eight dollars and two cents. What I'm gonna do is just stop looking and just move on to the next budget. And I'm going to be starting out with this amount. So I'm going to be rolling over. I'm going to grab a post-it note to roll over to the next budget. A total of, I'm going to put $13.87.03 for our checking account. And then $202 for cash. Just so I know how much is in our checking account. And this was $15.89.03. So this is what I'm going to be rolling over for our budget. Paycheck budget. Oh, on October 30th, which I will be doing right after this for our November budget. That pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you found it helpful despite it looking like a mess. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next video. Have a good one guys. Bye.